Today on Gamers Couch. Escape. Zombie City. Thought you were in a cave or something. Big box. <laughs> Now it's your turn. Thought you were in a cave or something. <laughs> you were playing with echoes. No, it's because of the, the, the voice saying escape. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's kind of like a whiny human that wants to run away from zombies. You don't have to look at the audio equipment. It's on. I did it. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to the Goofy Gamers Couch. My name is Sarah. I'm the artist Bampins Geschichten, Geschichten Blur, unable to talk. And I'm uh, owner of this channel and this is my escaping husband, Daniel, who oh, he, he tries to escape. He's not gonna. Got you. Got my. Got you. There. You're, mm. you're moving mm. slightly to the to the right of the frame, so I, I no, Am to, I? to the left of the frame. So maybe you're escaping. No. I can see that on the on the I'm not, monitor I'm, screen. I'm, I'm hopefully not. Which is moving. not a CRT monitor, although that would be funny if there's a full monitor like under the, the tiniest camera of a, whatever. <laughs> Time to talk board games. We're kind of scatterbrained today because we have wonderful German summer weather here, uh, aka migraine weather, and uh, it takes a toll on our attention span. So we try to get to the through this video as cohesively and well as possible. If we are unable here and there. Uh, please don't be mad at us. We're gonna... Or be, but don't let us know. <laughs> Or let us know, but don't be disappointed if we don't react. Or <laughs> don't be... Scatterbrained. Mm -hmm. Don't be disappointed when we react, I guess. Or... Oh, you don't have to list all the possibilities of things that happen. Leave some surprise okay. there, maybe. But what it's not surprising is that we're about to talk board games with you. Today it is The Escape. I have to get my hands to my person now and not do this. It's kind of distracting, I know. Um, we're talking Escape today and uh, we go about it pretty much like we do with all the other games that we showed you before on this wonderful format. And uh, we go with rules and gameplay first, then we talk about what we liked or not liked, have a thumb rating, and end with funny stories and experiences. There is no teaser for a new Draw for Initiative today because we published this week and the game was Railroad Revolution. The link is in the iCards above if you want to see it. You are. You What? are. Go on. You're distracting me. It's not. I'm I really trying anything. to keep it together here and move I, forward. I already. I already see someone is getting getting ready at the keyboard. It's a. This is a. This is a 50 minute game. How can the review be like more than 12 minutes or something? Like that? Scatterbrain people with lots of thoughts. Um, let's hop into, <laughs> let's hop into game and play, rules and gameplay. <laughs> let's hop into rules and gameplay. And uh, Daniel, you can talk uh, now how this is going to go. I'm going to roll some dice and I'm not going to say anything, I hope, and drink my tea for a while. Well, it's the end of the world as you know it. And there's zombies running around. So, uh, Escape uh, is uh, this is kind of the uh, re-implementation of the first Escape Curse of the Temple. I think it's called correctly. We, funny enough, we have the other big box, but we haven't played it yet. We've played this one first. Um, but my understanding is that they are both very similar. So if you already know uh, the other Escape game, you probably will just want to know the differences which you have to guess by yourself, because I haven't uh, played uh, the, the temple one. Um, anyway, uh, Escape Zombie City is a deeply philosophical view on uh, mass consumption and mindless mall shopping, as well with some religious undertones, I might say. 
Uh, in uh, this particular case, we are playing two survivors who have to, well, escape the city. Uh, and in doing so, we need to get a couple of items. And once we have the items, we have to meet up at the church and uh, then load our Scooby-Doo ghost wagon that we have here uh, with said items and drive off into towards, the sunset towards the interstate um, and once that is done we have won that sounds incredibly easy specifically uh, because you should be able to do that in within uh, 15 minutes there's a reason for that because this game is a real-time game meaning you will have an, either the CD or the vinyl of the audio soundtrack for this game maybe the mp3 or, or just i think there yeah there's is youtube it? no there's not an there wasn't an app for for this one but there's like a, even a youtube video that has those uh, those tracks uh, on them so uh, essentially you start the game uh, with running the audio track and you, we will spare you from that i guess for for this uh, because uh, it is really difficult to give you a, a good idea of what's going on while also trying in real time to play the game. So we opted out uh, of uh, playing the thing and just being random panicky on, on screen. Uh, so I'll just talk to you very roughly about what you can do. Um, and uh, so we're not really playing this time, uh, but for hopefully... We're playing in slow motion. Hopefully for you, that means that the video will be shorter than usual and uh, that we... I don't know. It might have been shorter with a real time with just 15 minutes. Probably. But then you, you wouldn't have had an explanation. Also, we still do our <laughs> let's talk about what we like and dislike about this. But uh, yeah, anyway, <laughs> so... Um, uh, the important bits, uh, each player, and this is a game for two to up to four players, has uh, five dice, and I yeah, brought them overhead into, camera. into the, the magical overhead camera. And I did all the faces, because I'm really nice. And Sarah did all the faces. There's six two faces. more? There's six faces. <laughs> no? Copy. Well. Copy them. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <Copy paste. laughs> so uh, they're, they're, uh, these symbols in and of themselves don't have um, a very specific meaning. Well, actually, two of them have, um, but um, we'll get to that. So there's uh, this running symbol, there's uh, this beating up fist, the, the, there's the bat, um, and uh, then we have the we are panicked and then we are uh, relieved uh, or we are not as panicked uh, something like that uh, so uh, this being a real-time game what you will be doing the entire game is uh, roll these dice and uh, do whatever you want you, you can keep dice um, and put them aside until they have the correct thing but you already noticed that I put away this one so uh, the panic phase means whenever you roll that you have to put that aside and don't touch the die um, and just leave it there the other spe special die is this yellow uh, you are relaxed dice and that if you check uh, or if you uh, pay with this you can re-roll two of those panic dice and for that you also obviously have to re-roll this one and if you're really unlucky you roll new panic dice and they go away again that's that's life so what can you do with these dice well there's uh, quite only a few things that you can do First of all, we start already here at the church tile, um, and um, I can move to, let's say, uh, either the west or the east. Um, and to move there, you have to roll the symbols that uh, are printed on that tile. So if I'm going to go to the right. If, if I start out with five yep, tile, so I, I already have these cool yellow things, and I have uh, the a fitting thing to go, go here and as I said this is running in real time typically so you have uh, this 15 minute mark um, in order to escape I said you need to collect items and as you can see uh, you bring these items to the church so you have to find them first and uh, in a two-player game we have to find four different items and uh, whenever we find something we go with the item back to the church unfortunately you can only carry one item typically at the t at a time uh, so 
you will start exploring first, trying to figure out where items are. And to explore, you have to uh, go to a street that you haven't, let's see, that, that you, uh, that still has open streets like uh, these that we have here. And then you try to uh, figure out where um, uh, something is. And to do that, we have this stack of tiles here. And to. Uh, two green, right? To explore a new one, you need two green. Uh, running dudes. Oh no. I'm gonna save this. Oh no, and now I can check in <gasps> these. And I have two running dudes. And I have also two running dudes. So Sarah gets the first tile. Um, uh, the skull has to point towards the street, the street yes. church. And there's a typewriter cashier kind of thing here. So. Yes. That so, goes. So the, the, the tile that... Uh, three blue! The, the tile that uh, Sarah uncovered is one of those where you can find items. Not all of them have that, but here, fortunately for us. So there's three different types of items. Uh, there's consuming goods or consumer goods, um, tools, and, um, well, medical items. They are not specifically uh, have any uh, mechanical meaning. It's just that, obviously... Um, when it, when we say we have to find four different items, if we find one of each, they are already guaranteed to be different, uh, which is a good thing because items don't repeat uh, across stacks. Um, to get the item, Sarah has to get here first, so she would need to get a, a bat and, uh, and a running guy. That. And as I said, whenever you spend or whenever you use your dice, you have to reroll them. You can leave the, the rest. And to get this uh, item here, she has to roll three fists. Uh, she already has two fists, and lucky for her, she uh, she got the. Yeah, that, oh, by the way, stop it. Uh, we forgot a little little thing. Uh, you would say, well, this game is super easy if it's just that. Well, it's not. Unfortunately, it's not quite just that. Uh, first of all, time is your enemy. The other thing is, whenever you discover a new part of town, you are prone to discover a zombie. So for that, you have that discovered, oh, and, now, yeah. and now, and uh, now the player who discovered that even before moving to that part reveals. Um, a cart. So uh, there's different cards in the stack. Um, this means all red zombies move. We don't have red zombies yet, so nothing happens good for this us. This is not a zombie. Yes. Um, so I can keep, keep trying for no, a no. fist. Yeah, yes. there's a fist. No, Sarah has both f fists. She would and reveal this tile, mean, and right? it is a bottle of water. And that goes... It's a 7-up. Oh, sorry. Uh, <gasps> it's that soda, that and, awful sugary thing. And so that, that goes in front, in front of the player who found it. And now Sarah has to or has that item to uh, get it back to here. She has to move back yep. to the church I and then and then have two greens. And while I'm trying to get a green and a red, you can talk on. No, oh, I have a green and red. I'm really good today. So. Uh, Putting, putting that there. There's another use for um, for, for for the bottle, and uh, we'll get to that once. Uh, let's pretend I'm I'm also checking into dice and uh, discover something because I hope now that I. So there's no, no items mm. to be gained here, but still I have to reveal a zombie card. No, nothing yet. So all green zombies would now move. Uh, actually, let me cheat a little bit and uh, take one of the cards. Let's say I just drew this card, which means uh, a zombie appears. Uh, for that, uh, we have this ba bag of flesh-eating uh, mass consumerism. And uh, we just put the zombie we drew onto the tile we just discovered. So in this case, a green zombie is here. Um, Hello, the, zombie. the zombies themselves don't do much uh, uh, whenever a card that uh, has their color on them uh, it means move that zombie so if if we draw that card after the zombie would have appeared we move the zombie always in direction to the skull which will inevitably lead the zombies to the church if as you can see here three zombies arrive at the church we 
have lost the game. That is one of the major ways how, how to lose the game. Uh, interestingly enough, the zombies don't really attack us, uh, as you might think. Um, you can fight them, and to defeat a zombie, you have to roll the symbols that are on here, and there's uh, like three different grades of difficulty. There's uh, green zombies, which are fairly simple, yellow zombies a little bit more difficult, and red zombies with that usually requires something like five bats or five fists and given that you only have five dice that is rather difficult to do um so uh, the, the zombie would, would appear, I can easily move onto the space with the zombie, all is good. There's only one thing that you have to be aware of if you're on a space with a zombie and have a panic die, you may not spend these relief dice to re-roll them. So as long as you're staying on a space with a zombie and you keep rolling those panic dice, you kind of will end up at some point maybe uh, being overwhelmed and have not enough dice to get out of there or uh, do any Thing. So um, if you at the worst end up with five panic dice, which means you cannot do anything ever at all there, you're kind of almost dead. You can't die in this game. Not well. You can if you lose the game, but <laughs> at this point you you cannot you cannot die. You won't but, feel anything. But you won't get away. Uh, so your options here are either you can uh, discard an item to reroll all five. Uh, which obviously lets you lose the item, but might be worth it if someone else already um, figured out and uh, got an identical item in the bus, uh, so you don't need it anymore. The, uh, the second option is that uh, you take a zombie card from the graveyard, reveal it, and then whatever is on it happens. If there's a new zombie, it'll, it spawns on the same space as you are. Now you have to worry about two zombies, so in our case green would move away from us. Um, and the third option is you just wait for someone else to come in. So um, let's assume Sarah gets in here and was able to beat the zombie here by fighting three or uh, uh, blue or rolling three blue fists. Um, that zombie goes, goes back into Got two. Goes back into the... Two. Let's see if I can have a third. Maybe. <laughs> Obviously not. And now you see why this game is a little bit more challenging if you're playing yep, with Sarah. got it. Uh, so, no, I so can roll simultaneously with two hands. Assuming assuming that, that Sarah rolled three fists to get rid of the zombie, uh, she now can help me up uh, in terms of if she has one of these relief uh, uh, rescue dice, uh, she can spend that one so that I can re-roll two of my panic dice. Uh, and then hopefully I can recover Don't panic, from honey. It's just zombies. Come back to church with me. Yes. Um, and that is the major gist of the first phase. You will be running around. You will be discovering new tiles. I, ideally, you try to get rid of zombies, uh, just but you don't have to if that makes sense. You uh, just need to make sure that not three or more um, will arrive here and uh, occupy the uh, the graveyard uh, of the church because that is unfortunate for you. Uh, now you keep on doing that and as you can see these tiles uh, are uh, essentially uh, divided into two stacks. You have the stack of A cards and then later on the stack of B cards. Um, and uh, while while you discover new tiles, you may see that some of them are uh, not open to all sides. Um, you find more stores to find different items. So this uh, repair workshop would give you items uh, with the wrench, a symbol, um, and I probably uh, I'm still on camera. Very good. Otherwise, um, you can also move to my. Direction. So you you go through them until you hit the B stack, and in the B stack. You get stung by bees. You are looking for the exit to the interstate. And uh, that is uh, this tile, or the, that, that tile. <laughs> uh, and uh, I, I just shortcut this here and uh, connect it to, to this space. Uh, once you have that, and you have all the uh, all icons here, you can enter the next phase, which would be traveling back. I'm just gonna with fill up the bus. So we have to find two things, which we did, and... Oh! There we go. Oh. Actually, we 
We have, have to have five. five. Oh, okay. I can count. I can. I can totally recognize two peeps. That, however, is not not quite yet uh, everything uh, because something that actually goes for both phases: the try to discover stuff and grab your loot, uh, as well as the one once you sit in the bus. The game uh, throws in um, after the first a third, um, or is it five minutes? I, yeah, it should be third. I think, I think yeah, it's, it's uh, a third. It's after after five five minutes, uh, you get a little warning sign uh, which uh, beckons you to return to the church because it's I guess it's getting night and zombies uh, get more aggressive then. Um, so you, what you have to do is you have to go back to to the church uh, after the countdown has finished. It's, uh, I think it's first, it's a 30 second countdown and the second time it's a 20 second uh, countdown. Uh, if you don't make it back to the church, you permanently lose one of your dice, which is really painful uh, for uh, the rest of the game. Um, but it, let's assume we did that. We uh, survived our phases. Uh, we got all the, uh, the items here. And what happens next is that we will uh, take our guys out of the game and replace them with the boss. Uh, or if you want to have some, some fancy way of doing that, you can also could also do this. But uh, we like to use our boss. This boss. Um, so it's now the DHL car. Now, and now uh, we um, and just for sake sake of demonstration, I will place uh, um, zo more zombies. Um, so we have to have blue and green and red and green. Yeah, I have I'm, a glare in that. Direction. I'm. I, I was about to. Oh, explain. sorry, Ben. So uh, now our the objective then is to uh, reach this tile in order to successfully exit and uh, therefore win the game. Uh, now, moving with the bus is a little bit different. Uh, first, the good news. We are all considered to be on the same space. So, um, similar to when we are just individuals, we can pool our dice to fight against zombies. And this time we actually have to do that because uh, if we move onto a space with a zombie, we have to fight them to continue going on. So there's no... Um, well, ignoring zombies anymore, because I guess church is boring and the zombies want to get into the delicious meat in the tin can that also is driving away. <laughs> um, so uh, the first major difference is uh, traveling is uh, now uh, works in a way that every player that is in the bus, or every player in the game, has to roll the two symbols that are on here, plus uh, another run symbol. So, so to move, green, over, one to move blue, over there, uh, we need exactly, each of us needs two green Got it. and one blue. Um, once we move over here, now we uh, have to reroll these dice, but we also have to fight the zombies. Unfortunately, I already have one panic die. To fight him, we need three bats. I have one bat. Three bats. Uh, one. Another bat. Oh, no. No. Ah! No! And, oh, oh, oh! And we oh. have five bats. So that would be enough to get rid of him. Um, and now we can continue our way. Since the zombie is gone, if we now roll our uh, our helping dice yep. like Sarah did, she can use one for two of her dice. And you want? I can yep. use the other one for two of my dice, and so on. Oh, look! I can now Five get these. bats. Is there a zombie? But we need, no. we need a fist and a Oh, I, yeah. Two fists there. and three greenies. Hmm. Um, Anyway, that's how we would then progress uh, towards the end of the game. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I mean, it's a 50 minute game. There's not too much uh, of rules to uh, pay attention to. Um, all you have to know are those four different actions you can do in the first phase, meaning uh, you can travel to another space, you can uh, loot the shops here, you can uh, discover a new place by uh, going to one of these sites and uh, doing that. And uh, you can recover if you are really out of uh, dice, but effectively you don't want to end up here. And uh, the way that the game allows you to save uh, dice all the time, it's usually a good uh, idea to keep one of those around just to save your butt if uh, something terrible is happening. Um, 
The game itself has multiple difficulty settings. So uh, these sets of zombie cards that make up the, the deck uh, actually influence how difficult the game is. Uh, there are more difficult cards that have two zombies spawn. Some of the cards have uh, zombies spawn on every zombie. Um, was it called? Um, uh, it's not a hill. Um, German? Um... I actually don't know what it's called in, in German, but there's some some of these have uh, like stacks of zombies mm, uh, printed on. A little them. pile. Yes, pile was the word I was looking for. Beak. Well, that's why I said hill, but mm. it's not. Yeah, hill so, is hugel. So uh, it's a small there's, bayak. there's for example a card there that says spawn a zombie, but uh, then you spawn a zombie on each pile. So one would go here, uh, you would draw one for here, and uh, the more the map is uh, discovered, the more zombies you have to draw. Then there's cards in there that spawn two zombies on the same space. Uh, other cards say a zombie of a certain color move twice. Uh, so that is quite unfortunate. They are a runner then. Yes. You can also adjust the difficulty by uh, having to or reducing the number of zombies that are allowed to enter the graveyard for the zombie party. Um, but that's pretty much it. I mean it's a it's a time timed game as I said everybody has to understand the rules beforehand and uh, I think it's uh, quite simple. It is a very hectic game since you will always be rolling dice and uh, be effectively focused on your dice. There's not much of communication happening uh, um, except maybe for someone shouting hey uh, we need to get this or that item. Um, if there is communication it usually happens after the return to the church phase. Yeah uh, where or the bus. Where it gives you uh, uh, also a 20 second reprieve uh, where you can strategize with the other players before it says escape again and then you have to go yeah. back and, and gather yeah, up. Yeah, but there's way more communication when you're in the bus and you want to go because everybody has to check in. I had the I have rolled the dice that we need to yeah. have, um, things like that, because you're so concentrated on your own. At least for the base game because mm -hmm. uh, this wouldn't be a big box if it's not in a big box and uh, that big box is not empty uh, it's uh, actually uh, comes with a couple of expansion modules um, so just in case that i don't miss any i will now cheat and look at the names of the expansions in the english it's manual queenie one queenie two queenie three and queenie four not quite so what we uh, but just, queenie four is back there it says what, what, queenie we, four. what we just talked about is the base game actually i, I forgot something but now that i see them uh there's some, some cards in here that make uh, the game a little bit even more difficult uh, that are called zombie bite cards and uh, without uh, finding them out, just holding them to the camera, you can see here there's cards with different effects. Uh, they typically involve stuff like you have to keep one arm behind your back, you're not allowed to talk, you have to stand the entire time or something like... Uh, uh, if you uh, roll the die off the table, it is lost forever uh, and uh, stuff like that. And you have to roll these uh, the symbols up at the bottom to get rid of those cards, which is just a neat way of adding some more difficulty than just having the, the zombies uh, in front of you. Good thing we play in a vault. But uh, playing, uh, talking, talking about the expansions, the major expansion in here is called the Survivor Chronicles, which uh, introduces uh, specific player characters. So in uh, this year, in the base game, you just have your wooden meeples uh, that move around. Uh, the Survivor Chronicles actually have you play with whoop, these. Who are, um, Who are. These uh, little standy uh, guys that have special abilities that usually help you in certain situations and you have to pick one out of two abilities that you can, can take. Um, then there's also challenges, which makes the game a little bit more difficult. Challenges are specific city tiles you shuffle in and uh, if you uncover one of those tiles, you have to follow... Uh, a couple of uh, specific actions you need to do there. Uh, so, for, for example, there's one tile that has a circus on there and uh, you have to uh, get um, 
all players onto the circus and at the same time and then zombies spawn and you have to fight the zombies um, or you have or you find your grandfather and then someone has to escort the grandfather back to the church because we all love escort missions um, and I thought you'd say we all love the grandfather and then I would say yes because we all seen up and and stuff like this so um, there's uh th those are these then there's a couple more um interesting zombies in there that uh, you can use to replace existing zombies um for example there's uh, a, a runner that uh, actually triggers on every color uh, if it says move forward so uh if you have the runner and draw three of these cards the, he would actually move three times um together with all the other zombies of that color, obviously. Uh, then there's something like a queen. The queen actually doesn't move, but uh, whenever the queen's color, which is red, is uh, triggered, uh, she produces a new zombie that uh, goes after you. Or you have especially tough zombies like the burner that requires seven bats, so you have to team up to get rid of them. Or uh, a zombie like the robust zombie that actually requires you to have a, a crowbar to be able to defeat him and by discarding the crowbar, which uh, is really, mm -hmm. really tough. Um, then uh, the other expansions we have, have in here. Oh, I, so, I'm sorry. I, I was already in the next thing. So the, the zombies are the queenie expansions. Bear with me. So the, uh, the queen, the uh, robust zombie and so on. Um, as well as the leech zombie, which uh, keeps you from running away, and uh, you have gully zombies, which uh, appears on uh, every every space where a player is, which oddly remembers me of zombie side. Mm -hmm. um, so that's uh, that's uh, with the the queenie part in, in there, uh, and then there's a second queenie in there that introduces items or more items, but these give you specific boosts. Um, so like a weapon that counts as a free uh, f a die phase uh, whenever you are in a combat situation. Changes with that are that um, typically these items only get refreshed when you have the run back to church phase, so it's overnight and uh, part of that is uh, that you restock every empty space on the, on the workshops and the hospitals and whatnot. Um, with the, the queen that introduces more items, you immediately replenish them uh, if you if you got an item, just to uh, make sure, I guess, to be able to get all these if you have to mm -hmm. wait for uh, the, the night. It might be a little bit too late for that. Uh, the second queen also introduces new zombies and uh, some... Uh, some stuff like uh, a new um, a new Straßenabschnitt, as as it says here in the English manual, <laughs> which is a new a new street tile that acts as a kind of second church uh, that you can use. And uh, the third queenie is uh, also something that's uh, quite interesting, uh, and uh, those are task cards. Uh, they are a little bit similar to the cards that says you have now to roll the dice one after another or keep your arm behind the back. But the task cards have some more specific uh, mentions, like you need a certain amount of items or you need uh, uh, to kill a specific number of zombies. And if anyone has a task card in front of them that's not resolved, yet you still lose the game even if you escape so you uh, would be mindful of doing that but it kind of throws you into a curveball where you uh, not only have to do uh, to focus on on this here um, but maybe on some other task that has or forces you to go out of your way to com complete it and i think that's a good um classification of what these expansion modules are doing uh, when we talked about uh, the Fresco Big Box, uh, those modules all added new uh, gameplay mechanics that I would say made the game more complex mm -hmm, and richer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, here, um, since this is a cooperative game, every module you add on, I would say, except for the, um, for the individual characters, uh, everything makes the game a little bit more difficult in a different way, yeah. which is uh, not necessarily a bad thing because um, I mean, the base game is all right. 
I think it is uh, also a little bit dull if you keep playing. Um, Shall only... we call this the next section, or are you still in the first? Only one? that. No, I, yeah, we can go yeah. into likes. So likes and dislikes, and keep talking. I want to know oh. what you think about the base game. Uh, being, uh, as I said, the, the base game would uh, easily become a little bit dull. Although I have to say, this is uh, probably still great to play with kids um, as a, a very simple or. Uh, entry game and then you can keep on stacking up uh, stuff uh, while also ramping up the the difficulty uh, and i have to say the the modules with the different gameplay mechanics are at least to me that's a more interesting way to up the difficulty rather than uh Uh, tweak the variables like uh, what the zombie cards are uh, doing. Like you, you have to face more zombies now, or you have to let in less zombies. That's that's fine, I think, for for a, a difficulty uh, in the base game. But as I said, I think the more interesting part is something like, and now you have to do uh, a different task because that is something, at least for me, that introduces something like uh, something to be uh, that I would remember from that play if that makes sense it gives some yeah. story bits yeah. and pieces and it, to, it also to is your, it's, it might be your own challenge versus the group challenge yes. uh, to escape so you wear two hats uh, which always makes it more interesting uh, it still will uh, bring up your pulse even more that's for sure Um, it's, it's cool to escape from the zombies, but it's also cool to escape from the zombies and then realize, oh no, grandpa! And mm -hmm. then you have to to get get back and get grandpa, get gramps to church. Yeah, it's it it kind of feels like uh, writing any Hollywood movie. There, everything looks good, and then in the second act, you realize how much you failed, and then you attempt again, and stuff like that. So, uh, one thing that I really like is. Uh, This is Sushi Dies in the uh, cooperative mode without the bell. So you can play it in a restaurant. Maybe. Well, there is a bell, so to speak, by having the... the yeah, but it's not the ding, the which thing. is kind of annoying at one point. But um, I like I like that you roll dice. Um, there's other real-time games that we have where... Things feel way more panicky than they do with this particular one here because you always feel like you're doing something by just moving your hands and rolling dice and cursing a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so I like that uh, a lot. Of, uh, there, there's, yes, of course, there's a lot of luck factor once you add a die roll to a game, uh, but it also makes for very funny experiences and for very let's say, colorful curses at the table, uh, something like, uh, and I thought there was a, a possibility of, I don't know, 15% for a certain face to come up on the die and stuff like that, and you beat physics and math and everything all in one go. It's That's, uh, not, that's not how statistics work. It's not a guarantee. Uh, the black face in, on this die, which is a six-sided die, is what for a normal die in the couple of two dies would be the number seven. It comes up most. It's very... The probability of this one coming up is like almost must, 25%. Must, must, be, must be your dice. Yeah, of uh, course. But it, it adds to a certain panic... Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, and I, it's nice. And I, and I think that that already gives you the good idea of, yes, this is probably pretty good uh, as a party-style game. Exactly. Uh, the, uh, the downside there is, um, first of all, it must be quiet enough to listen to the audio track because you, it's not much information that is conveyed there. It's essentially the same that you could do with a sand, sand clock. You just need to be yeah. aware of. Or, uh, or you put a timer on your phone just five minutes yes. and you have it ring really loud. That's okay but, but too, that, but that, the flavor then mm -hmm. is gone a bit with the creaking doors and then knock-knock on the means, church and everything. Yes, and that means that you probably don't want to play this in a very noisy environment. Exactly. Um, the other part that is, I think, a little bit, well, not disappointing, but uh, oddly uh, in terms of uh, target uh, group size, 
I think four players is still a little bit less for a party game or for something yeah, like it's, this. It's, I, I would I would have almost expected this to be two players up to let's say seven or, or six. Yeah, with least. five or six exactly, like a big family or something. This is a small family game. Small meaning two adults, two kids, uh, or one kid, one auntie. Um, but it actually has room enough for five or six people, I would say, and then be more for a party New Year's Eve kind of game where you don't want to um, have the excruciating gameplay experience that you sometimes have with yeah. um, more heavy Euro dice, but you want to have a lighter party game, but something fun and moving and meaty and something challenging. Yeah. Uh, but maybe not a pandemic legacy or something. But, but to play devil's advocate here, um, that might not be a problem because it plays so fast. Well, since, exactly. you're, since you're guaranteed a 50-minute game, um, although the box says 20, but effectively yeah, it's, it's 15. Yeah, it's uh, with can setup time easily, easily have yeah. people drop in, drop out. Uh, yeah. And I would say, at least for me, more than two, maybe three plays um, is the maximum that mm -hmm. uh, I will be uh, willing to chuck dice, uh, like a dice chuck. I um, mean, chucking dice longer, but it's it's exhausting it with is. real time. Any real time game is exhausting. And yes. I just had a thought there, which is uh, totally coming from left hand side here. Um, That's if you the right hand side, left. Yeah, this is my left hand side. No, I pointed you and it, it oh. comes from there and it goes to here. Meaning uh, you can, uh, if you really want to play with more than four players and you want a game like this, you might want to rather look at the temple game, the escape temple game, because it has more players and this one has few. So there's yep. maybe that's okay. why there's two escape games and, there. and, and again so, sorry for not being able uh, to give you the the full-blown differences between those two i'm i'm just aware that uh, curse of the temple was out first and probably has a little bit more modules in, in the box we're gonna play them we'll, but we'll one after out. the other we need time folks you yes. know there's the last four weeks there have been multiple games yes. um delivered and they all want to be played and, and, and yeah. I, I know i know better than to make any promises but it might be that next week we are on vacation on a entirely new continent yeah um actually actually we're working towards that <laughs> we're trying trying to get that done so we can on next sunday talk about that yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But uh for this game um what i want to add uh where's the lid do you have it on yeah one thing that i really liked with this particular game is and also the same with the yeah. no i don't want to throw you under the bus uh is that uh, it comes with a lovely insert and it shows you on by the, the way this is an image representation of the insert yeah and it comes with the uh how to this is the insert yeah how to practice what goes where. Uh, since it is my unofficial job at this house to prep the games for gameplay, uh, punching everything and unwrapping everything and sorting everything in very sweet and little um, Ziploc bags and stuff, uh, I was very, <laughs> very happy. This is not vinyl. Um, I was very happy with the way this yes. uh, was set up, especially after the Fresco Big Box experience and how to get all the modules in there. I was very positively uh, surprised how they handled it for um, yes. Escape. And it was so easy to put this game it's together awesome. and ready for gameplay. To be fair, um, Fresco, I think, has 13 modules, 12 modules. There's a, there's a video in the iCard that you can see, and we talk about but all the modules there as there's, well. There's a lot more yeah. in terms no, of... No, but uh, there was no data in there on how to put it yeah. into that's, the box. And that's I something was, they probably The point that. that I want to make here is this is awesome. This is... Uh, this. Uh, 
took me like 10 or 15 minutes to punch everything, put everything together and sort it into the box, which is a very nice time for a big box game to be sorted and be made ready for mm -hmm. gameplay. And I liked that a lot. Also, while I did prep, um, of course, uh, I, I do always look at the components a bit more. And there's some, some sweet little goofy things in here as maybe tiny bit of a joke but i really just liked the uh component quality and the colors and stuff it's mm -hmm. very very it's, it, it it's very robust i think exactly a, it's a family exactly. great game let's yeah and it has uh, color scheme wise it very much reminded me of rampage which is also a family mm -hmm. game uh tiered towards the younger kids with the parents and this very much felt in the same realm of oh people that play rampage might very well mm -hmm. like this one as well so um that was just something that i noticed and another thing that i liked a lot is that the manual came in german and english mm -hmm. and that, and you don't uh, have to search for things but it was uh, every um, module came with a with a separate part or a I separate mean, manual. You've seen, you've seen me just flip through. Yeah, the and there is a smaller what's... one for the recent uh, module. Oh, that right, is there's, not in there. there's, a, there's another queen in the corner. There, right? The there's... Queenie four. I forgot one. No, no, the queen number four is in here. Although, to be to be fair, uh, queen number four is uh, super short. It's um, it's English. Actually, English is fine. Uh, so, really. So it's a, a, a new. I'm so surprised. It's a it's a it's a new character and uh, just <laughs> some some new street tiles. Um, that's uh, and that that's it. So it's really just a, a, a tiny thing. On for some reason we have two. Queen yeah, Force we got. Um, well, we got them delivered the big box with the extra Queenie Four and both of the games. Both um, big boxes came with two of the add-on. Thingy. I don't know if they had something uh, mixed up in delivery or whatever, but in case some some uh, something goes missing here or whatever, or bitten at because things are maybe a bit too difficult, mm. we have a second chewing, set. Chewing, chewing at the queenie. It, it, mm, okay, we talk about that later. Um, but <laughs> I'm going to tell you that joke off camera. Um, but uh, I think... It's time to rate, or do you have any other wise no, words to add I, that you? I don't really have anything interesting to say. I mean, it's a. Uh, it's, well, you said a lot already. It's. It's. Um, I think. Uh, well, we can frustrate. One, two, three. Yeah. I, Tilted. Okay. Yes, me I, too. I. I'd say with. Uh, well, it's August already. With Halloween coming up soonish. Uh, Shoot. This uh, might might be something uh, to bring out while having uh, Häppchen, which is your German lesson of the day, uh, which are hors d'oeuvre or uh, in English. You speak French. I'm so proud or in, of you. Or as uh, or a Häppchen, as the English call it when they Open speak German. Open up a starter. It's a starter dish. Or a Häppchen. Häppchen. Roast beef. <laughs> That's how we say roast beef. <laughs> That's how we say horse meat. <laughs> Go on, I didn't want to interrupt you, but it's kind of brain, like I said. Mm -hmm. It's difficult. Today is, is difficult for that. Maybe it's because it's not Saturday, but Friday. Mm -hmm. um, because we go out and we have rock band tomorrow. Goodbye. Oh, no, not no. Oh, so. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> so. <laughs> we will escape. Oh, come on, no, I, I, <laughs> I was I was about to say I uh, I think uh, I I do like this. Uh, this is certainly not something I I want to play every time because it is quite taxing and um, I, it's for uh, the let's say uh, for the two games I'm I'm playing some. Usually we want to play something that's a little bit more me meatier, but yeah. for something like uh, if we have people coming around for Halloween or something that plays on while you have other people or maybe talking yeah. um, or like maybe even the warm up for uh, Spiel this year when we have people over where we have to yeah. separate groups because we have so many people uh, at the house. 
And some of them want to maybe play a bit of a lighter game or a shorter game or yeah, something. I, that would be perfect. I there. mean, you still need a lot of space because you you might guess if you uh, well you can't see it now, but no, I can you, cut to if, that if camera you have once the, more. The, the whole the whole stack of things tiles lay, laid out yeah. uh, until you figure out where this is, and if you're really unlucky, it's the last tile because all these get shuffled up in their respective A and B stacks. Yeah. Um, yeah, but let's let's hop into the last section and uh, talk about funny stories and experiences. I'm not a hundred percent sure if my wonderful roll of dice with the five red bats was just on frame, or if I was off frame earlier. But that happened with black dice for me. I was really good, and it was our first game, and I uh, had to draw a zombie, and uh, had a lot of luck there um, to have one of those uh, colorful moving cards and not a zombie on the on the tiles yet. But it is definitely possible, and I think in this box particularly, uh, or especially, twenty five percent of the six-sided die to be rolled on a black side is uh, 25%. Um, just saying it's not one sixth so, so of, here, uh, of a probability. So here's my very, very hot recommendation. Don't play if, with me. <laughs> if, you are, if you are a Sarah and uh, dice hate you, they then, don't hate me. They just want to challenge me. Then, very unless, much. unless you want to go with the theme of The Walking Dead and have despair at every corner without any respite, uh, Escape Zombie City is the right game for you. If not, and you want to get around that, have a look at Magic Maze, which is similar in terms of you have to uh, discover these tiles, and we actually talked about this, but does not involve right. dice. So um, that would be an alternative uh, for you. If, uh, if or you, you could just take your antibiotics before you play, so and then Wheaton's disease is not then, that bad. Then, I promise you, it's just it just happened that I kind of had to giggle really hard, and then I also had the oh no, how can I? Of course, it happens to me. That kind of thing going on. Um, but we had to. You had to be rescued. I remember when we played with four players. Valentin had to rescue you because yeah. you two guys were. Um, we I had, don't know. We had one of these fine gentlemen in the way. And yeah, you uh, were zombieing around while Tina and I were uh, pretty much on the shopping. other end of the of shopping is what it's what it's called of the uh, map, and we were discovering and bringing the items back. Yeah, shopping, and then we also washed the car and waited for the guys. So can we leave now? Can we escape, please? While you were um, dying. I don't know, you were chatting up that uh, zombie. And by the way, I just want to tell you that if we ever paint uh, this game, this is a very valid idea to paint on Draw for Initiative. But when you said earlier that uh, the zombie wants to, is interested in the tin can meat in the mm -hmm. bus, I thought it would be cool. The, the zombie thinks this is one of those ice cream trucks and it goes with the mule, goes around and then uh, it waits in line to lick at a human's brain and it is one of the survivors. It's a funny picture in my head and it might be painted at one point. I don't know. I mean, uh, I, don't, I don't know what they're called, but if, you, if those, tin, those tin can openers yeah. that you just attach and then... Yeah. Turn it around. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe he could have a, one, a giant one on that. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, it's a cabriolet. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh gosh, or, so or, many or, ideas. Or this is. <laughs> or it's just a. It's just a. A, a bus DHL with, with, uh, delivery with, with an advertisement for canned meat. Yeah. They... But this is how the ideas sometimes happen for the paintings that we then later on have for uh, those games. So, yeah, there's a lot of fun in in this box and. We always made it, by the way, uh, playing, but it it was, well, let's say, well, one was kind of easy, but the other game it's, we were, it's, the, the last game I think it was that playing, we were... Playing with more players, having to find more items it was, is, is a little bit more challenging yeah. because you find more duplicates and... Um, 
Mm -hmm. You have to rescue more people from the black dyes and stuff. But as I as I said, the extra modules, uh, I think, are a good way to yeah. tweak your game up until the point where you think it's it's getting too difficult without becoming um, boring, boring, and, exactly. or getting too frustrating or having. Different yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it change. also changes things up in the well experience on what you got to do. It feels different. Uh, that adds mm -hmm. to replayability and all that stuff. So, definitely good experiences with the big box. True. And uh, that is yeah. all I have to say. Can Man. we can we escape now? We escape now. Yes. Uh, we escape now to wonderful dinner and board games with my mom. I have to make you jealous, jealous folks. And uh, we're going to bring King Domino tonight to play. And uh, tomorrow we're escape. rock banding. Escape. No, we escape now. Uh, we need to go. No. There's all those zombies on the internet I've heard about. <laughs> I thought they were outside because I hear the doors from the neighbors coming home. I hear the car doors. We, the zombies we need to go. Home. Goodbye. <laughs> Have a wonderful weekend, folks. We hope we're back with a less scattered brain next week. Uh, very sorry. But, well, we're human beings. We're no zombies and no robots and no silence. So... Uh, if you um, did find it a bit more difficult to listen this week, we promise we're going to be better next week. Uh, we're going to see you then. You can find us on all the social medias that are in the description box below, as well as Board Game Geek. We do have geek lists for this uh, format, as well as Draw for Initiative, if you want to take a look there. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, use the comment section, talk to us. We're very happy to. Uh, yeah, use the comment section to talk to us. Just talking to the screen, not working as well as. Unfortunately, you might. not. Yes. I would love that, actually. Yeah, I would. Yeah. YouTube, get behind that, please. So, uh, have a wonderful weekend. If you got time to play some games, that it would be awesome. Otherwise, enjoy yourselves. Have a great day, and we're going to see you next time. And now we escape. Goodbye. Bye. I have to, I have to cuddle with you, and I have to tell you the Queenie joke. Bye. <laughs>